Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about main memory in the computer architecture course, computer organization course, computer organization and architecture course. First of all, what is the purpose of main memory? Main memory is the central storage unit in the computer system. Main memory is used for storing programs and data during the computer operation. Used for storing programs and data during computer operation. Next, second point, the principal technology used for the main memory based on semiconductor integrated circuits. Semiconductor Integrated Circuits This is the principal technology used for the main memory. Next one, main memory contains two types. First one is RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Now, RAM is also called as Volatile Memory. What is volatile memory? Volatile is nothing but whatever the programs and the data that is stored in the random access memory or remains valid as long as the power applied to the unit. Once the power is turned off, whatever the content that is stored in the random access memory or simply erased. Because of that reason, we can say that RAM is also called as volatile memory. So, it is also called as temporary memory because whatever the data and programs that are stored in the random access memory or remains valid as long as the power is applied to the unit. Next one. There are two types of RAM. First one is static RAM. Second one is dynamic RAM. So these are the two types of RAM. First one is static RAM. Second one is dynamic RAM. Static RAM consists of internal flip-flops 
that are used for storing the binary information. A flip-flop is a storage device that is used for storing only one bit of information, either 0 or 1. Hence, we can say that static RAM consists of internal flip-flops that are used for storing the binary information. The stored binary information in the static RAM or remains valid as long as the power is applied to the unit. Once the power is switched off, whatever the content that is stored in the static RAM are simply erased. Okay. Next, static RAMs are easier to use and has shorter read and write cycles. Okay, static RAM can be used very easily. So, it has shorter read and write cycles. The main application of static RAM is used for implementing catch memory. Okay, so while we are implementing catch memory, we have to use static RAM only. That is the main application of static RAM. Okay, next. Considering the dynamic RAM. Dynamic RAM also stores the binary information in the form of electrical charge when we are applying the that are applied to the capacitor. Dynamic RAM stores the binary information in the form of electrical charge that are applied to the capacitors. Capacitors are provided inside the RAM chip by using mass transistors. Capacitors are provided inside the chip by using mass transistors. The stored charge in the capacitors tends to be discharged with the time so that the capacitors must be periodically recharged while refreshing the dynamic memory. Okay. Hence, the refreshing can be done for every milliseconds to, to restore the decaying charge. Okay. So, dynamic RAM stores the binary information in the form of electrical charge that are applied to the capacitors. So, the capacitors are provided inside the chip by using mass transistors. The stored charge on the capacitors tends to be discharged with the time by refreshing the dynamic memory. The refreshing can be done for every milliseconds for restoring the decaying charge. Next one. Dynamic RAM is used for dynamic RAM can be used reduced power consumption. Reduced power consumption and larger storage capacity. Larger storage capacity. So, dynamic RAM provides reduced power consumption and a larger storage capacity. Whereas, static RAM provided with maximized power consumption and a smaller storage capacity. Static RAM contains only smaller storage capacity. It can be provided with larger power consumption. Whereas dynamic RAM provides reduced power consumption 
and the larger storage capacity. Okay, next one, dynamic RAM is used for implementing main memory. Dynamic RAM is used for implementing main memory. One of the major application of dynamic RAM is used for implementing main memory. Whereas static RAM is used for implementing catch memory. Static RAM is used for implementing catch memory. So these are the main differences between static RAM and dynamic RAM. Once again, I am telling static RAM consists of internal flip-flops that are used for storing the binary information. We already know that a flip-flop is a storage device that is used for storing the binary information. Next, static RAMs are easier to use and has shorter read and write cycles. One of the major application of static RAM is used for implementing catch memory. Static RAMs are mainly used for smaller storage capacity and larger power consumption. Next, whereas uh, in the static RAM, whatever the programs and the data that are stored in the static RAM that are remains valid as long as the power is applied to the unit. Now, dynamic RAM is also used for storing the binary information in the form of electrical charge that are applied to the capacitors. Capacitors must be provided inside the uh, dynamic RAM by using mass transistors. The stored charge, the stored charge on the capacitors tends to be uh, discharged with the time so that capacitors must be periodically recharged by refreshing the dynamic RAM. The refreshing circuit can be uh, the refreshing circuit can be done for every milliseconds for restoring the decaying charge. Next one, dynamic RAM provides reduced power consumption and a larger storage capacity. One of the main application of dynamic RAM is used for implementing the main memory. Next, the second type of memory is called as ROM. So ROM is nothing but read-only memory. So ROM is called as non-volatile memory, non-volatile memory. So ROM is a portion of main memory that is used for storing the data and the programs permanently. Hence we can say that ROM, read-only memory can be called as non-volatile memory. So RAM stores the programs that are permanently inside the chip. Once the manufacturing of the RAM chip is completed, it is not possible to change the programs that are stored in the RAM. Once the programs are stored in the RAM, that cannot be changed once the chip manufacturing is completed. Okay, because of that reason, we can say that ROM stores the programs permanently. ROM is mainly used for storing an initial program called as 
bootstrap loader bootstrap loader what type of programs that are stored in the read only memory okay so rom is used for storing an initial program called as bootstrap loader so bootstrap loader is a program that is used to start the computer system that means start the operating system whenever bootstrap loader program is executed whenever the system programs are stored in the secondary memory they are loaded into the main memory it is nothing but Bootstrap loader is an initial program that is stored in the read-only memory for starting the computer of computer software operating. That means we have to start the operating system. We have to start the computer system. For that purpose, we have to use one program. That program can be called as bootstrap loader this is called as initial program this initial program is stored in the read only memory that program is stored in the ram permanently it is not possible to change the program that are stored in the ram hence we can say that to store the programs permanently we have to use a memory called as read only memory in the case of ram we have to store the programs and the data temporarily when the power is applied to the unit in the case of random access memory but in the case of ram whatever the programs that are stored in the ram that are permanently whether the power is uh, off or are on position okay so this is the description about the main memory okay so this is the introduction part of the main memory so after that we can go for uh, ram chip separately rom chip separately next one is memory address map next one is how memory is connected to the cpu so in the main memory concept there are four parts first one is introduction to main memory so this is the introduction to main memory second concept is ram and rom chips third concept is memory address map fourth concept is how main memory is connected the CPU. So these four concepts comes under main memory. Okay, this is only introduction part. Uh, in the previous videos, we are already discussed uh, second concept RAM and ROM chips, third concept memory address map, and fourth concept how memory is connected to the CPU. Okay, these links are available in the description box and comment box. So please verify the uh, four concepts in the main memory. I hope all of you understanding this concept. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment session. I will try to clarify your doubts. If you really understanding this video, please subscribe my YouTube channel. So, Divela Srinivasara. After subscribing my YouTube channel, click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my YouTube channel. Please forward this channel to your friends and classmates. For better understanding of computer organization or our computer architecture or our computer organization and architecture course, please go to this and uh, watch the playlist called computer organization for computer architecture for our computer organization and architecture it contains approximately 82 videos thank you
thank you one and all for watching this video